until you keep on listening to this video. We are making references. We are showing you everything, you know. And Mayogu have told you people, download an app. You can record. Thank you. You never expected anything from him. He is a divider in chief, okay? He is a terrorist, a killer. Are you with me? Right? So the divider in chief that has failed the five percenters who never really expected anything from that from him he has also failed and ruined and destroyed the 97 percent that he mentioned there shagari that this weary overthrew in uh what do you call it in uh, 1985 shagari didn't do this much and listen to this madman who has now divided nigeria even more than you can ever imagine the shiites came out he killed them. The IPOB members came, came out. He killed them and proscribed them as terrorists. Are you with me? Uh, the a revolution now came out. He killed them. He called them terrorists. Young, young people came out to protest against police brutality. He killed them. He called them terrorists. Women came out in Taraba, in Benue, to protest the kidnapping and killing of their children. The, his policemen killed them. He called them terrorists. But guess what? He's a national negotiator for terrorists. Um, Sheikh, uh, uh, what do you call it? Sheikh uh, Gumi. Sheikh Gumi is walking about getting prime time, uh, look, I mean, allocation, prime time, uh, you know, slot on different uh, major TV and radio stations in Nigeria, promoting the amnesty for killers, those who are kidnapping and killing children, raping women. And getting paid huge amount of money as ransom there are no policemen no authority no cbn no nothing can track that same madman who overthrew uh what do you call who overthrew shagari in 1985 he gave this reason that madman is now threatening the entire southern nigeria with civil war just as planned they are coming over uh, for it uh, uh, and end the Shagari government. Yeah, I guess so, because I mentioned why we did it. And we so, uh, this is Shiny Light TV station, London Worldwide. And when Mayegu have finished uh, stop in certain places, so they brought Buhari to say something. So, when we are fighting for freedom, they, when uh, they think because we are in second generation of slave trade. We are in second generation of slavery. You know, because when you are, when you are in your country, you cannot say, you cannot even say anything. They will come to your house and take you. What, what, uh, and they are working against human rights. They are using all their power, all their offices, all their platform to destroy human rights. You know, we are blaming the Europeans about slave trade. But this is slave trade in Africa. When we cannot speak, when we cannot talk, when we cannot exercise our rights, this is slave trade. But I am going to be hammering it because this is Shining Light TV station, London, worldwide, listening to what Buari is going to say now. Prove the that's a democratic process that we have uh, extended. So when you are in democracy, so you are entitled to steal the treasury draft and put your people into corporate position and destroy institutions and destroy infrastructure. So you blame Shagari uh, for that? Don't, don't personalize it. I blame the Second Republic for that. For that. And when we came out, we told the nation why. And we conducted the inquiries, documentary ones, not just here, see? Sorry, it's 1983. Don't mind me. I can always, like, uh, juggle the, uh, the date. There's so much I want to say at the same time. It's like me saying 1,000 words in a minute. If you have been there, you understand me. So, yeah, it was uh, late 83, and it got thrown out 30 months after that by Babangida in 85. That's right. So the plot is actually just... And uh, this is the Shagari that deformed National Assembly. Um, Buhari that deformed National Assembly 
during Shagari government, which Shining Light TV station, London, worldwide, I was hammering, say, Governor, show us your work. Senator, where is your surgery? Voters right. The same worry, they have elected him and his government is worse than what he think about Shagari government. So let us keep on listening to what Mayegu tried to tell us. You know, people download this video because I know Nigerian mentality. They're going to, when they're going to uh, ask the YouTube, they can buy them over to delete all this thing. So with what you have, you know, we can still continue on this battle of freedom, of human rights in Nigeria, freedom of Biafra, freedom of Odudua nation. You know, we can continue with it. Amen. To get all of us killed. You can't come out. Just a few days ago, they attempted to kill Omo Yele Shure right before our eyes, live on camera. We were watching them. When the, when the policeman who tried to kill Omo Yele Shure moved back, caught his, uh, uh, his gun, and he shot him right before our eyes. And just a few hours after that, their media was everywhere telling us that uh, it was a powder. Somebody blasted the powder. That's a messed up country that Pokwari has created. And it's working according to the way they wanted. Shure came on this show. Shure said, Mayegun, I understand that uh, people want to settle with the fact that uh, Buhari is dead. But Mayegun, Buhari is not dead. He is demented. But everything they are doing right now, all the killings, all the harassment, all the kidnappings, everything, they are exactly what Buhari wanted. So, and for those who are believing that he's dead, it's just to continue to make it look like he didn't do anything. Oh, maybe it's not him. Oh, maybe they are doing it on his behalf. Just like the tweet that came out yesterday where Bokwari threatened the entire eastern region, the entire southern region. I mean, in his world, though, I'll read, the, I'll read that out. Let me see if I can pick that up. That's my phone. Bokwari came out to issue a threat. Meanwhile, Bokowari, who traveled to Ghana when the two over 200 school children were kidnapped in Niger, eh? in Niger State, he traveled to Ghana to go and discuss the problem of Mali. Are you following? Problem of yeah, I have to come into that one that uh, Buku, uh, Bukuhari you know, Buhari traveled to Ghana. What is uh, the uh, what is Buhari going to say in Ghana? You can't leave your house that is in fire. Every naked house has seen that they go to school and invade people in boarding house. What are you going to talk about Mali? Are you from Mali? Mali is not your country. You know, Mali is not your country. That is why they know their hidden agenda. They are from Mali, they are from Chad, but they came to Nigeria to invade Nigeria. So, keep on talking, Mayegu. I'm going to be chipping in on this talk. This is Shining Light TV station, London, worldwide, you know. Everybody try to support Mayegu. Look at the, look at the freedom fight. You know, they shot. How can you be talking democracy? You carry gun. Democracy is not for gun. Democracy is for peaceful talk. Government by the people, by the people. That is what democracy is all about. You know, democracy is not where you bring military. Military will go to their camp. So, Bukuhari, you are a failure. And let me tell you, you have failed in uh, overthrowing Shagari government. And this is second failure. And let me tell you people, Yoruba, there was a, a documentary I made. I said, Yoruba, open your eyes. Open your eyes. And now, Mayegu is telling you people too, Shia and Sunni, open your eyes. You know, thank you. Mali. And when he came back, they briefed him, the IPOB. The ESN, they are the one causing trouble. What do you want us to do, Mr. President? We have arrested over... Do you know that they have actually kidnapped over 2,000 people? As we, as we are watching this video, over 2,000, 2,000 uh, people 
are currently in different uh, location, you know, uh, kidnapped, loca in different police uh, location, and all of them, they are soldiers. Many, many have been executed, uh, you know, in an execution style on the street, just to send the message of terror, just like uh, this man warned us. Abacha. And people don't give him his due. Do you think you would have tolerated such nonsense? General Bacha famously said that if an insurgency lasts for more than two days, the government goes. That is the real and the truth. And let me make some revelations because some of us also have our own intelligence networks. Okay. Okay. Have met. Uh, this is Shiny Light TV station, London, speaking. This man is a PhD, a PhD holder from Oxford University. He warned us. He warned us what is coming up. He warned us. He will be warning us. And he keep on hammering. But I know they are going after them. You know. So we, we can't give up. We have to talk. Because if we do not fight this battle, what are we going to leave behind for our own children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren? Are we going to leave this mess? For them, we need to establish our human right. This man went to came, uh, Oxford University. He's a PhD holder and he's talking to them. We have to keep on talking. This is Shining Light TV station, London, worldwide. I am keep on hammering. There is no Nigeria. There is no a country called Nigeria. We have to hammer it. We are Biafra. Biafra want to go their way. Uh, do the one nation wants to go their way. Uh, every person wants to find their way because there's no government. You know, this man is a PhD holder talking about the same government. Everybody is talking. The civil rights man, Rowale or whatever, I didn't remember his name. He said the same thing and they shot him nearly to kill him. But we have to, we can't give up. We cannot give up. They say kingdom of God suffered violence and violence taken it by force. We can't give up. The PhD holder have started talking. We have to talk. This man is an Oswaldan. Thank you. With some of the bandits. We have met with some of their high commanders. One or two who have repented. They have sat down with us. Not once, not twice. They told us that one of the northern governors is the commander of Boko Haram in Nigeria. Boko Haram and the bandits are one and the same thing. They have a sophisticated network. During this lockdown, their planes were moving up and down as though there was no lockdown. Moving ammunitions, moving logistics, moving money, and distributing them in different parts of the country. They are already in the south, in the rainforest of the south. They are everywhere. They told us that when they finish these rural killings, they will move to phase two. The phase two is they will go into the urban cities, going from house to house, killing prominent people. I can tell you, this is the game plan. By 2022, they want to start a civil war in Nigeria. Don't joke with what I'm saying. I have a PhD from Oxford University. I'm a central banker. We don't talk nonsense. So don't joke with what I'm telling you. I have this from the highest possible authority, higher possible, higher authorities of some of the commanders of the killers and Boko Haram. You, you, said, you said northern governors, past or present, Dr. Badaya? No, current, current. Current. No, they said... So you can hear what the PhD holder, somebody who went to Oxford knows what he's talking. Is talking sense. You can hear what the Oswaldans is saying about all this Bukuhari government, all this Janjawi. You will come to your country. We, our own children cannot even go to holiday in their mother's country. You know? What type of... This man is from Oxford University. He's talking sense. You cannot go to Oxford whereas you don't know what you are doing. He's talking 100% sense. 
So this is Shining Light TV station, London. And we have to fight this battle to liberate our own children, to liberate our grandchildren, to liberate our great-grandchildren. We keep on fighting the battle. May God, may God bless you and uh, may God bless you in abundantly, give you more energy. You are doing a wonderful job. This is Shining Light TV station, London worldwide. And I will keep on talking about Governor, show us your work. Senator, where is your surgery? Voters' right. Thank you. I hope you remember that, Abby. <laughs> now, this was last year. When he was saying this, the DSS picked him up, okay? And uh, he, you know, he, he defended himself and they let him go. And today, they have started the killing, strategic killings. They will keep people here, keep people there prominent people. They will set up the assassination so that uh, everything will now look like, ah, this is chaos. So look at this IPOBO. Ah, they have killed this person. Oh, oh see what they have done. Oh, they have burned down police station. Oh, because that is exactly what they want you to believe. Because that's what they did in 19, 1966. Let me give you, let me take you back a bit to what actually happened and the effort to prevent what Bokwari is about to start again, way back then, eh? in 1966. The story from the office's mouth, directly. January 15, 1966, who carried out the coup? Now, this is Shining Light TV station, London. We are just using this video. We are not copyright. We are not copying Mayogu, you know. You can hear Shining Light TV station voice live, you know. We are using this video to promote the work of Mayegu, to promote the work of Mayegu, and any human right who stand up to fight this battle for, uh, for we, pres uh, present Nigerians, for we, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, we are ready to promote them. And I, Shining Light TV station, London, worldwide, I say, Governor, show us your work. Senator, where is your surgery? Voters' right. And... We, Shining Light TV station, London, worldwide, we're going to support Mayegu. Mayegu, may God give you strength. We are not copying, we are not copying your video. We are just using your video to analyze everything that is going to uh, Nigeria. This is not copyright. We don't, we are not copying Mayegu's. We're just using it to analyze what is going to Nigeria. You can hear my voice clearly. Shining Light TV station, London. Our ministry is Nigeria, we should exercise our, our rights. We should speak out. Biafra should go their way. Odutuwa Nation should go their way. Every other people, because the Biafra fought this war for you to live. So everything Mayegu is talking, bringing a lot of video, references to this. I am using Mayegu's video to reference to my talk. So I stick on my governor, show us your work. Senator, where is your surgery? Voters' right. Namdi Kano, stick on his, I want my Biafra. I want my Biafra. Mayegu sick on Oduduwa Nation. So, the battle uh, continue. Thank you. And for what reasons? I thank you for giving me this opportunity to try and enlighten people. Ojuku is about to give his own speech. Ojuku is the one for this, uh, what is happening? Ojuku saw it ahead. Ojuku saw it. Ojuku is an Oxford, you know. He's a, a somebody who studied in Oxford and did his history, you know. These people are very intelligent people, like Shining Light TV, London, Worldwide. I am a very intelligent woman because I knew that if this Biafra should not establish themselves, we are heading nowhere. Ojuku, keep on saying what you say. May your soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. You are our great hero. We remember you. Ojuku, wherever you are, we remember you. We can never forget you. You are our father, our great hero. Thank you. Unless cool, there seems to be at the center of uh, subsequent problems in Nigeria. The coup of January 
of 1966 was actually led by Hejo Ifajuna, and he commanded the activities in the south, and uh, Zogo, another major, uh, coordinated the northern side of it from Kaduna. The reason for the coup, if you remember Nigeria, became independent in 1960. We had a government, a quasi-Westminster type government with a uh, parliament and a ceremonial president. Uh, reflecting as it were the Queen of Great Britain. Uh, that was Dr. Nnamdi Azikiwe. And uh, Tafar Balewa was the president from the north. Now, the real problem with Nigeria has always been the imbalance of the federation that was, is, and was known as Nigeria. Um, I remember when I was at school, I was taught that the great thing about it, uh, the federation was that no federating unit should ever be preponderant over any, I mean the others. As it happened, the Nigerian federation, when it was created, was... I'm going to be coming in here. I was in National Assembly present when Ojuku came back from Africa. Dr. Walter of Onagro, PhD holder from, from Harvard University, United States, Shagari sent a message that we should go and welcome him. When Ojuku came back from Ivory, from wherever he went to exile, I was present. And we all went, we welcomed him, we embraced him. And he became a senator. He became a senator. He did not become a senator to betray the Biafran people. He just want to say, okay, we have gone to the war. The war did not work out. Let me key into this uh, uh, MPN government and see what they want to offer. Ojuku as an intelligent man, very, very intelligent like my son. My son is super, super, billions intelligent, you know. Ojuku key in to Shagari government and he won election to become a senator. You know Ojuku is no nonsense man. When Umaru Diko tried to slap Ojuku, Ojuku gave Umaru Diko stupid, dirty slap two times. He said, look, as far as the soul of Nigeria, uh, uh, soul of Nigeria stands, Igbo man, if any outside people slap you one, give them 20 times. Do not be afraid, you know. Ojuku have that spirit of soundness and boldness. This is something Nandi Kalu have. This is something Shiny Light TV station London worldwide. I have it. No weapon formed or fashion against me, against my children shall prosper. Because my message is coming from God. Ojuku slap Umaru Diko. Umaru Diko, former minister of transport. You know, Ojuku said, look, I am no nonsense man. That's why we came to North to do the beating. Ojuku was a senator. He was eating with them. And Ojuku tried to penetrate and see where these people is going. Ojuku fought this battle. So this battle continued. Nandi Khan is fighting it. Shiny Light TV station is fighting it worldwide. Mayagu is fighting it. So Ojuku, continue with your speech. Thank you. It was given down to Nigerians from London. And that federation, the imbalance of the North being preponderant, in fact, over the two other sides, the West and the East. And this created, right from the first day, a certain degree of friction. The North could dictate, and the South whichever part of the South could just complain if it's not in accord with what the North wished. The first few years of independence were not too bad, but uh, a lot of um, unfulfilled ambitions of the Nigerians because in those days we thought that 
once you got independence, you were free and everything worked and you joined the higher league of nations uh, internationally discussing what went on. In fact, to Nigerians it looked as though, and indeed they tended to show that independence in itself was the achievement. Now Nigeria was free as well, a member of the world. Instead of looking upon it as the beginning of our journey to nationhood. And I say this, and I want to understand for it. Nigeria was not, has never been a nation. We had the aspiration, hopes that Nigeria one day would become a nation. And that has been elusive up till today. The reason being that, unfort most unfortunately, the powers in Nigeria were concentrated in the hands of the North, which was preponderant, and wrongly so. At independence, we hoped we would be, in fact, the three leaders of the country had different notions of independence. There was the actual leader of the struggle for independence, Dr. Nam Diazikiwe, who rightly thought that independence now created, as it were, a beginning but that we were already a nation and we were now finding our positions in his own philosophical, political uh, beliefs in Pan-Africanism. So we just had to move in into the broad continental alliance. Uh, you can see, uh, this is Shining Light TV station, London Worldwide. You can hear my voice because why I'm using voice, I don't want to pull my face before you think it's copyright. No, this is not copyright. I am using this video, complete video, to analyze what everybody is saying. You can hear what our father, Ojuku, who fought the war, said that Nigeria has never been a nation. You know, Nigeria, that Dr. Nandi Azikiwe, who fought, Dr. Nandi Azikiwe, Chief Awolo, the people that fought for independence, the people that fought for.